This is Okinawa, Japan. Okinawa is an island off the coast of Taiwan and it's a stunning place to visit. So I've been here shooting a film on longevity. For those of you who don't know, Okinawa is one of the blue zones, which is a term given to an area with a high concentration of health and longevity. And that's certainly the case based on what I've experienced. The big question though is, is that due just to the diet or is it due to a bunch of other factors as well? That's what I'm investigating in the film. Today though, we're talking just about diet. According to statistics, Okinawans are some of the healthiest and long-lived people on the planet, while surpassing average life expectancies in the West, with some villages having a life expectancy of 90 for the women, compared to around 84 in places like Australia, which is where I'm from. Importantly, the elder people in Okinawa also experience incredible health throughout their life all the way into their later years. Many of the people I met were still living independently even at the age of 100. Now for a reported blue zone, somewhere where there's a high concentration of health and longevity, if you look around, it's not what you'd expect. It's not an old style village, at least not this spot right here. It's become a mix of modern day culture and ancient traditional culture, all blended into one. The trick is, can longevity and good health drive forward through that unique blend. We'll see. Today I thought I'd share with you just what Japan's oldest people eat. I've been here for a week staying with a local family and it's been a heck of an experience. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe to the channel and follow me on Instagram at Kale's Broccoli. Let's jump into it. Staying with a local family was a great way to learn about the Okinawan dietary habits. And I think the best place to start this video is with breakfast. I will say from the get-go that most meals in Okinawa are quite similar throughout the day. There is a notable lack of sweet in their overall cuisine that was quite refreshing. Breakfast did not entail sugary cereals with milk, but rather a nice bowl of miso shiru, miso soup, followed by some seaweed, rice, and other vegetables. For lunch today, I'm headed to the local markets to check out what's on offer. There's so much going on. <laughs> We're about to head into the Kosetsu Ichiban, which means the local market. There's gonna be tons of different Japanese food. Let's go check it out. These are all different pickles and seaweeds. One thing that you'll notice immediately as soon as you come to Japan, Okinawa included, is there is an abundance of seafood. And I'm not just talking about fish, I'm talking about seaweeds and fish. It's absolutely incredible. It's a plethora of different varieties. <laughs> A traditional staple in the Okinawan diet is something called the goya, or bitter melon. Its strong flavour is renowned and makes for a great feature of any veggie plate. It is a well-known, highly antioxidant-charged superfood. You can have it whole, like this, or, as I'm about to find out, juiced as well. No ice or ice? Uh, no, ice. no ice or with ice? Which is better? Which is better. <laughs> okay, this one. Yeah. I'll try this one. Yeah. So this is the uh, bitter melon, the goya, the juice of it. Um, and 
I've, I'm imagining it's going to be, like the name suggests, incredibly bitter, but we'll see. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Extremely bitter. <laughs> okay, note to self, Goya is better as part of a veggie plate, not as a substitute for green juice. Maybe I'll stick to kale. Moving on. We're on the hunt for the elusive sweet potato of Okinawa, a very famous food. However, the season finished apparently in December. It's now April, so we're a little bit late. We're hoping we can find something, at least. <laughs> Who knows? Contrary to popular belief, Okinawan people did not consume much, if any, rice traditionally. It's only been in the last 20 years that it has become available in such high quantities, enabling them to consume it at most meals. Now, unfortunately, the rice has displaced more nutritious foods, arguably, in each meal, particularly the Okinawan sweet potato. So what you're looking at here is, I guess, a, a compromise. We haven't found a fresh Okinawan sweet potato yet, but this is actually a mix of rice and sweet potato from last season and uh, the locals mix it into a kind of gel if you will that ends up tasting like this it's very sticky and it's quite starchy you can tell there's a little bit of rice in there but overall there is that earthy sort of rich almost chalky element to it which is going to be indicative of the potato itself. That's not half bad. That's pretty good. So there you go. That's our, that's our sweet potato for this trip. <laughs> so lunch, in case you hadn't realised yet, is more vegetables, seafood, a little rice, and maybe even a little land meat like pork. One of the 100-year-olds that I met and spoke with said that she actually had a small amount of pork every day to keep healthy. So it's not just vegetables that the Okinawans eat by any means. We are at the most incredible organic Japanese buffet right now. All of the vegetables here on these two huge tables are grown at the restaurant's farm here on Okinawa. And the restaurant is only on Okinawa, they don't replicate it anywhere else. It's absolutely incredible. Look at all the magic going on and there's all sorts of food. 95% of it's true authentic Japanese food. Totally incredible. One thing I noticed about the Japanese cuisine is that they never overeat and they eat slowly. I adopted this whilst there, but it mightn't have been by choice. Uh, chopsticks serve two purposes. As a fork option kind of thing, but also for me to actually slow down the eating process because I'm so bad at them that I constantly miss the food that I'm trying to select. <laughs> What I really loved about each dinner though is how family oriented it was and how cordial the Japanese do it. Everyone is so polite, kind and generous and hosts constantly nudge plates toward you with the accompanying words kame kame which means eat eat. As the guest you are kind of obliged to agree. Amidst great conversation and company and a very much savoury diet, I think it's pretty hard not to be healthy and to live a long time for the Okinawans. Overall, the food in Okinawa has been absolutely incredible. I've been surprised at just how many vegetables we're getting at every single meal. We've had seaweeds, we'd have on land vegetables, and we've had a whole plethora of seafood as well. Guys, if you've enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel, follow me on Instagram at Kale's Broccoli. And if you want to live a really long time, like the Okinawans do, perhaps stay tuned to check out my film, The Longevity Film, which is coming out later this year. We'll see you then.